a little bit better, a little bit better. Touchdown! Woo! Yeah! And why it's happened this way, I don't know. Yeah! I'm just glad that it's happened. It's the 2000s. That's what it is. my favorite memory of the 2000s. When you're dealing with an entire decade, it's tough to list the moments you love. If you guys can't give me a answer, then I'll bring someone in that can give me a answer. What I loved about the 2000s is we had a dynasty. And the Patriots have done it again! The competitive Super Bowl was the highlight of the 2000s. He's gonna go all the way! I love Y2K. The yellow line. The red flag. The Jets created a flight crew. And they are going to get better looking, I promise. <laughs> love was everywhere in the 2000s. We got so much love to give. But we also tapped into the opposite emotion. I hate the man, I hate Ryan, I hate all of them. Nick Saban is the biggest piece of turd to ever hit Miami. But let's be clear, this is a list about love. I'm not the bad guy, I love you. The top 10 things we loved about the 2000s. I so let the love begin. You know I love you. <laughs> All right, babe. Oh yeah. All right. The number ten thing we loved about the 2000s: Brett Favre's foot floppy. So this list is the top ten things we loved about the 2000s because I hated this. <laughs> top ten things I hated about the 2000s: Number one, Brett Favre. Uh, I am officially retiring. Well, that would be the number one thing I hate about the 2000s, is watching that soap opera unfold. That's okay. It's a matter of opinion. That's nonsense. We all love drama. We loved it in high school, we love it in junior high, and we love it when we see Brett Favre wavering. It was never about me, it was about everybody else. If a guy goes to a press conference and cries, then I believe him. Favre suckered me, he cried, I thought he was done. I don't know what I will do, I hadn't really thought about it. Questions? While the media may be conflicted about Brett Favre's back and forthing, the fans were captivated. Love and loyalty followed number four from Green Bay to Minnesota. And when Brett carved up his old team on television, it was the most watched show in cable history. But the TV buzz truly began back in 2006. Focus clearly on Brett Favre right now. Brett Favre is going to get carried off the field. This could very well be his last game. When do you think you'll make your decision? Soon. The Brett Favre retirement watch is over. He is retired. Thanks. What I love about Favre, it just seemed like there was always a reason for Brett to find, to come back. News breaking on Wednesday that Favre was considering a comeback. Every week, Favre would have another twitch or inkling or thought of, maybe I'm going to retire, maybe I'm not going to retire. Brett, the Jet, the Big Apple, buzzing. You know, he screwed the Jets. The New York Daily News sports page proclaiming Brett Jets. <sighs> My shoulder. Brett Favre is who we thought he is, a future Viking just waiting for his arm to heal. You want drama, and he gives drama. The official word came out that Brett has decided to remain retired. But what? what's going on? Uh, okay, Brett, make up your mind. Brett Favre ending his retirement for the second year in a row, officially signing on Tuesday with the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know if I'm coming back. I don't know if I'm going to quit. I don't know if I'm going to retire. I can't stand the guy, but then he goes out in the field, and you go, wow. Look at you, hold on! Far back to pass. Sends it over the middle. Over the middle. Fires to the right. Caught. Percy. Fires left. Caught. Passes to the end zone. To the end zone. Touchdown. 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 Touchdown bring himself to leave. I didn't notice it before, but I noticed it now. After the Jets, after the Vikings, I think the only person who's not sick of it 
is Brett Favre and possibly Brad Childress, who will be idling at the airport with the Favre sign in case Brett decides to show up. You always have a nice way of putting things. How cool is this? Up next, what was the biggest bang of the 2000s? It's changed the parameters of everything. You know what I loved about the 2000s was the comebacks. New kids on the block, they were terrible back in the 80s. Now they're coming back as 40-year-old men with the same little hats and stuff. Laughable. Mickey Rourke, you gotta love him. He's a guy who smokes a cigarette. Now he comes back as a wrestler, he's all, this is my comeback, look at how good I look. In the NFL, Detroit fans started the decade with one question. Are you coming back? No. No. <laughs> While Barry Sanders stuck to goodbye. See you later. In Houston, it was hello again. On opening night, Reliant Stadium has erupted. The NFL's return to one of its former cities was followed by a re-airing of prime time. Deion Sanders has a touchdown Ravens. Yes. But the real returners of the 2000s are next on our list. The number nine thing we loved about the 2000s. The return aces. Oh, they, they absolutely made it exciting. He's got it. He cut back left. It is a touchdown. An incredible punt return by Dante Hall. Dante Hall had, in 2003, one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen from a return man. Touchdown! Dante Hall, for that window of 2002 to 2003, fell in that category of a guy that could break the rules. Dante Hall went right, left, forward, backwards. And it didn't matter. The human joystick. Dante Hall's going to do it again. I thought, OK, you know what? This is a once in a decade guy. And lo and behold, a couple years later, this kid comes from the University of Miami who was just unbelievable. Touchdown, Devin Hester! You are ridiculous! The guy is just, he's brilliant. You know what, he's genius. And now Devin Hester gonna run it out. He kind of just fakes. Now nah, I'm not gonna do anything, I'm not gonna do anything. To the 15, right 20, 25, 30. And then when he makes his turn, you realize that, you know, Houston, we have a problem. Forget it! Nobody's gonna get him! Hester's two heart-throbbing seasons produced 11 instant scores along with an unforgettable start to Super Bowl 41. To the outside, 40, midfield, But our lovable returners didn't rest because another speedster popped up in Ohio. I think what makes Josh Cripps so special is that he is capable of running back a kick every time he catches the ball. He's gone! Joshua Cribbs, touchdown! Josh Cribbs is absolutely reckless and fearless. You're gonna get hit, run over, and even when you think you have him... Here's Cribbs, where's he going? You don't. Weaves left, pops out of a tackle, touchdown! During the past decade, Cribbs, Hester, Hall, and a host of other return aces made one thing abundantly clear. The most devastating scoring play in the NFL is a kick return. Touchdown! The Jets have won the game in overtime! More people are putting money in the guy that can change the game. He is unbelievable! We were really kind of in a glory period where, you know, Josh Cribbs is so amazing at it. Dante was as good as anybody's ever been. There have been great returners in every decade, but clearly the 2000 decade was special. The number eight thing we loved about the 2000s, new stadiums. I love the glitz, the glamour of all these new stadiums. It was nice. Sometimes it almost takes away from what happens on the field. Gotta forget about it when it's not playing, though. They just are so plastic and antiseptic. As long as I ain't paying for it, I mean, I'm good with it. By the turn of the century, our love affair with the NFL made it America's number one sport. Oh my God, what a ball game! So the league decided to do some remodeling.
baseball was always retrofitted. It was put into a baseball stadium. We finally got rid of that baseball, oh, man, you know, the infield. Great. But we've come around. We fixed that. I think there have been 21 new stadiums since 95. We got a nice new stadium. 12 this decade. We got to come up here and ruin that. We're now playing football in football stadiums. While many teams like the Eagles needed new stadiums, some felt their new digs were too nice. I don't think teams really have that fear factor when they come into Lincoln Financial Field. It's, it's nicer, but it's certainly not as intimidating as the old vet. Though others may have gone soft in their new home, Seattle went hardcore. They put some engineering work to enhance the noise. Now this is where the 12th man comes in and it gets really loud down there. To make it even noisier than the most noisy outdoor stadium. And it's been a huge advantage. As the offense having a tough time hearing because of the noise from the 12th man. They're going to call a legal motion again. That's nine false starts. What's not to love about Cowboys Stadium, which Dallas opened in 2009? What the Roman Coliseum was to the first century is what Cowboy Stadium is to the 21st century. We call it Jerry World in our part of the world. This is the Taj Mahal of stadiums. Man, that, that place was like a venue, you know what I mean? I felt like I was at a concert, not a game. It's kind of like you had a club or something. It was crazy. Cowboy Stadium holds over 100,000 fans and one eye-catching feature. You're paying for tickets to go to watch the game and your eyes are just continually drawn up to watch this incredible TV screen. I've never been that big before in my life. While our number eight entry went Tiffany, some still preferred Walmart. It's like you're going to a nice restaurant every day. Once in a while you need to go to a dingy diner to have a good greasy hamburger and you don't get that anymore in the NFL. Coming up, in the 2000s, what quarterback rivalry set the football field on fire? What I loved about the 2000s was the technology because 2003, MySpace, 2007, Facebook, 2009, Twitter. I'm sitting here reading my tweets while I'm getting pampered. Well, I think it's, it's just a sign of the times. It's this. This has become a movement. It's tweeting. It's texting. It's, it's, it's getting out there. John Pillow, follow me on Twitter. You know how we talked about that Twitter thing? Do me a favor. <laughs> yeah. Be careful of the tweeter. You know what I really loved about the 2000s? That everybody now has a cell phone. He went and got the phone and pretended like he was making a phone call to somebody. Man, just get out here, man. You got what? How many hours we got? We got three hours before the game starts. I need you. When I was growing up, my mom wouldn't get call waiting because it costs an extra 25 cents. You're Dougie. But now she has text messages. She sends them to me all the time and they all end with LOL. Text me again. All right, I'll text you. I don't think she knows what LOL means. While LOL may throw some people for a loop, throwing is a necessity for the next lovable item on our list. Who is this, Paul? Throw it out there. The number seven thing we loved about the 2000s. Hey, hey! The red challenge hey, flag. Hey. Challenge! What the hell's going on out here? How in the world can all six of you miss a play like that? Hey, you over-officious jerk! For decades, angry coaches around the NFL have been arguing bad calls. You misplaced the line of scrimmage, you bunch of dummies! Until the 2000s revolutionized football with a little red flag. Challenge it! Challenge it! Challenge it! Challenge it! What, you want to challenge it? Cincinnati has challenged the ruling on the field. I did like the red challenge flag, and I liked that they made it red. Red flag! Right there, Joe! There's a real game show feel to that. Dave Campo and Steve Mariucci, come on down. Let's go. It's time to play Red, red Flag Challenge. Coaches, instead of a red flag, have a red buzzer in front of them. See, these things never work. Challenge! Challenge! Hey! And they just hit the red buzzer, and there's a big X that goes across the screen. I'm challenging! Oh, I hate that gizmo. That's why I carry this flag. I'm throwing the flag. I'm not Challenge doing that. It. Challenge it! Hey! We are reviewing the ruling on the field. Come on, come on. The ball never got in the end zone. Okay, thank you. What do you guys think? We get it? After reviewing the play, the receiver caught the ball. The players reversed. 
That's a good call. That's a good call. I like the red challenge flag. I just hate the way they throw it. You got guys dropping it at the feet of the referees, they're throwing it a yard. If you go underhand, it looks like you're pitching horseshoes at some point. To me, it's got to be overhand. The overhand is more demonstrative. It says, I know we're going to get this call. That's a touchdown! Some guys think that it's the discus or the shot put. I mean, they send that thing flying. Take out that challenge play. Let's just get it out there. I think the red flag challenge, I think it's added a, an element of comedy to the National Football League. I think I had that. Did it come out or not? You got that, right? Yeah, I think I did. Probably not comedy that the league was looking for. How about a replay? No, they ain't gonna show the replay. Show it, show it, show it. But I think it makes for some funny moments, and it's added some levity to the games. Despite the comedy and confusion, a red flag used correctly is a coach's key to a second chance. Hey, he doesn't have control of that ball! Thank goodness for the red flag. That's a critical call there. Changed the game of football. Changed the outcome. Changed seasons. It changed everything, adding the red flag. There we go, babe. Great job, guys. Nice operation. The number six thing we loved about the 2000s, Brady versus Manny. It's absolutely the best rivalry right now in the NFL. They specialize in making big plays. Give me time, we'll hit the touchdown here, okay? They specialize in comebacks. Brady comes up big time. They specialize in scaring the other team. I think this is the greatest rivalry. A guy who was a number one pick and another guy who was a sixth round pick. I can't stand it. Hold up and run it again, Brady. Well, you can spell Peyton Manning MVP today. The one guy is up on the pedestal. The other guy, nobody gave him a shot to be a great quarterback. And he's well on his way to the Hall of Fame. 16-0, perfection personified. One guy wins all the time, another guy amasses great stats. A record they thought would never be broken has been broken. Back to throw, Brady fires, end zone, touchdown. And the Patriots have done it again. Brady's had more success in Super Bowls, and yet you can make the argument that Peyton is a, is a better overall quarterback. Peyton Manning, just a machine. During the decade, we loved the contrasting styles of Brady and Manning. I think what makes Manning unique is I don't think there's any quarterback in today's NFL that runs his game. I mean, this play we center, we call pass plays, block, Buffalo, Buffalo. He's putting his stamp on the game that he's playing. I think that's why it's fun to watch him play, because it's his game. He's got the dice, and you just don't see it that much. Touchdown! Woo! Woo! But there's a feeling that in the big spot, in the big game, the guy you want is Tom Brady. So the Patriots live to fight another play. He is what Joe Montana was, and Joe was Joe Cool. You are in the last drive of the game, you need to score. He doesn't have a care in the world. He'll just go out and get it done. I think the best thing about Brady versus Manning is they got to play so often against one another. It seemed like every time they, they played, it was just a huge game. Brady has been magnificent. Passing game is flawless. Brady takes the pass, left now, fires left right over, touchdown, and the Patriots are heading back to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowls were at stake. AFC championships were at stake. We got our money, man, in the money time. Let's go. Takes the snap, rolls to the right, fires to the back of the end zone. Got it! He got it! We're going! We love the way Brady and Manning dominated the decade, quarterbacking in six of the ten Super Bowls. However you want to rank Peyton and Tom, they're going to be in the top three probably in the history of the game. It was captivating because of the storylines. Everything lined up perfectly to make these guys compelling foils for each other. Brady wasn't even good enough to be a full-time starter in college. There was a Peyton can't win the big one period of his career, and then he does win one, and he's redeemed. Holds a world champion! World champion for the first time! 
It's the greatest rivalry with the greatest moments. Here we go, man! Hold on tight. Up next, our countdown goes for a ride. Watching the top 10 things we loved about the 2000s makes affection irresistible. Luckily, there's more to love, but first, let's recap our list. Number 10, Favre's infuriating flip-floppy. Make a decision, man. Number 9, the rise of the return man. Housing boom hits the NFL. Gotta forget about it when stop playing, though. Number seven, the red flags fly. Right Number six, football's dueling darling. I think this is the greatest rival. And now, the number five thing we loved about the 2000s, the coaching carousel. Everyone loves to ride the merry-go-round, which may be why we love the roundabout world of NFL coaching in the 2000s. In a decade with so much turnover, you have to wonder. So how many coaching changes were there in the entire decade of the 2000s? I, I do not know. <laughs> Just head coaches? In Detroit alone, it was like 159. 30? At least 200. Between 70 and 80? Would you believe 74? Is that right? 74 coaching changes? That's amazing. Who do I got to fire? Romeo Cornell gone in Cleveland, Eric Mangini moving on from New York, and Rod Marinelli fired in Detroit. Teams and cities and organizations and media, they're not so patient anymore. I mean, you'd love to fix it all right away, but you just, you just can't. They're not feeling like they need to wait 10 years for your program to kick in and mature. We'll get there at some point. Coaches used to have more time. The reason I had a five-year plan, I had a five-year contract. But time in this decade was increasingly short. The Seattle Seahawks have fired head coach Jim Mora after just one year on the job. There could be a number of reasons for that. Free agency, the salary cap, your teams change faster. Scott lost his job. I don't think owners are pulling the trigger too quickly on these guys. Man, kick it! If anything, back in the old days, they just waited too long. That's why I'm gonna get fired, too. What do we love so much about the coaching carousel? Respected veterans had one last shot. I'm done. While a new generation came of age. In only his second year, Mike Tomlin has won the Super Bowl. Well-known college coaches became NFL dropouts. Nick Saban is the biggest piece of turd to ever hit in Miami. And who could forget those meltdowns? Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. I want winners. I want people that want to win. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Just, just keep watching. That's all I can tell you. While the Eagles, Patriots, and Titans were the only teams to have one head coach throughout the decade. Your heart's as big as my waist. The Redskins were number one with seven. Good job, Bo. What a shock. Dan Snyder likes to change coaches. I wouldn't believe it. The coaching carousel of the 2000s was a scary ride. With a sword in the other hand, right? And that's why we loved it so much. Be careful with this thing. <laughs> this is for real. The number four thing we loved about the 2000s, the Patriots dynasty. Yeah, we are a dynasty. And the Patriots have done it again. Three out of being the best, they use the word dynasty. They use it for the Steelers, they use it for the Cowboys and the Niners and the Packers, and they use it with us, and it makes us proud. Choosing to be introduced as a team, the New England Patriots. The dynasty, they built it on the philosophy that the only name that's important is the name on the uniform, and that's the Patriots. I'm gonna make the decisions that I think are the best for the football team. T-E-A-M as in team. In 2001, number four on our countdown did not feel the love. Drew Bledsoe, their franchise quarterback, was injured. And Tom Brady, a sixth round draft pick, took over. When you're the 199th pick, it was like, whew. 
You know, I was thinking about what the heck I was going to do for the rest of my life. For the rest of that decade, we love Brady's transformation from underdog to icon. Brady rolls right, got a man open, touchdown! 36 seconds left, Brady drives him 60 yards, and Foxborough loves Tom Brady. In Super Bowl 36, New England faced the Rams and their greatest show on turf. A pulse-pounding finish to this one here. You'd have to give the 2000s to the Patriots because they did it over a sustained period in a very difficult salary cap era. This was the free agent era, and they still were able to maintain success. If you looked at the start of the decade and looked at their roster and looked every three years all the way to the end of the decade, you're not going to see a lot of carryover. They had this amazing ability to reinvent themselves along the way. No matter what button the Patriots push, it's perfect. The Patriots were playing chess when every other team was playing checkers. Throughout the decade, the chess master was head coach Bill Belichick. I mean, most people think that he's some vampire hidden in his cave or something like that where you can't communicate with him, but, I mean, Bill's a cool guy. Don't get into a quickness game with him, because you're not very quick. He's just somewhat of a mad scientist. He's in touch with everything. You gotta remember the 2000s were the decade of the internet geniuses. And Bill Belichick was kind of like an internet genius. Let's go to the tape. The Patriots were a team that won with information. Maybe a little too much information. In the 2000s, we loved the way the blue-collar Patriots played with a chip on their shoulder. There is a defiance that really defines the best teams, and I think the Patriots have that. Why are guys so driven? That's truly the heart of a champion. Intercepted! The Patriots are going to be Super Bowl champions again! One ring. We want two rings. We want three rings. We want to be the best. Up next... Do you got your buck on red? Who was the top personality of the decade? How personal is this? I'm going to give you your money's worth before I leave the day. You know what I really love about the 2000s and personalities? Lindsay Lohan. Ten years ago, I remember telling my friends that Lindsay Lohan was like one of the hottest chicks out there. And now I'm pretty sure she would date me for like a pack of parliaments and some lifesavers. While Lindsay's stock sunk during the decade, other celebrities surged. I will give you a thousand dollars if you go propose to Carrie Underwood right now. <laughs> Good job. Stars collided throughout the 2000s as the NFL's elite rubbed elbows with actors, athletes, entrepreneurs, even Eminem. We are glad to have you here. The Hollywood effect hit, and the decade's football stars demanded more attention. What up, what up, what up? Here, what up there, TV land? That's the man to put on TV right there. I gotta get on TV somehow. But no amount of camera time was enough for the lovable cast of characters next on our list. It's real in the field! Woo! The number three thing we loved about the 2000s, wild whiteouts. Good to see you. You're good? Yes, sir. Hey. Right. Whether you know him as 85, Ocho Cinco, or otherwise, the wideout formerly known as Chad Johnson typified the enchanting entertainers of the decade. Chad Johnson is a genius. Chad Johnson doing a dance in the end zone. He's doing a little Mexican cha-cha. He's creative. Like this. Like this. He's always coming up with uh, props. He put a Hall of Fame jacket on on the Bengals bench. I just inducted myself. I just like the way he has something different all the time. Looks like he's little got putty. a button little putty. Putty. Yeah. Chad Johnson got on a knee like he was proposing to Daphne over there. He did that on the sideline. He knows if he does that in the end zone, he gets popped. Uh -huh. That's a genius. Is there anything else I need to say? Chad Ochocinco is really funny, and I think T.O. is actually pretty funny as well. Here we go. Here we go. I'm in a league of my own. They ain't ready for me. Here I am. It's me. The guy's just so out to lunch, it's ridiculous. <laughs> half of him I like, and half of him I don't like. I love it. They hate to love me. He wants to be despised. He wants to be hated. They all hate me. They hate to love me. Although deep down, 
He wants to be loved by the people around him, and that doesn't always happen. I love me some meat. You know, I know like Ocho Cinco and T.O. were like the big ones. T.O., I'm gonna hold you down today, baby. The most interesting one to me was Steve Smith because Steve Smith is a crazy person. If you see this face, that means our school. I call him Freddy Krueger. He scares the hell out of me. If you see this face again, that means I score again. As long as I've known him and seen him play, he's always played with a little chip on his shoulder. You don't think I'm one of the best? You better check your reference. I, I, I don't play with a chip on my shoulder. Hey, I must be pretty good. I'm an introvert to the extreme. I don't know why they don't like me. I just make plays, that's all. I ain't do nothing wrong. Look, there's some of this stuff that's cute. Some of it is amusing. Is that a pin? I mean, I think the Sharpie thing, that actually is kind of amusing. That's a first. Using the ball as a baby. Uh, man, it's fantastic. I gotta put this tie away. You know, Steve Smith and the rowboat, Chad Johnson and some of the things he does. Chad Johnson, the Mr. Showman. People love that color in the game. That was a good one. If you're going to showboat, you want to play to the home fans. Because if you do it on the road, basically you're really grandstanding and rubbing it in the face of the opponent. I have never seen anything like that in the NFL <laughs> in the years I've been part of the game. I think what adds to the interest is that we have some characters. It's okay. Hey, I'm going to give you your money's worth before I leave the day. I'm not suggesting that everything they say or do is appropriate. They still love to hate me. But they add to the entertainment factor of the sport. Man, enjoy the show. I love you and good night. Don't let the dough hit you on your way out. That's all, folks. We're almost finished. Why are they taking so long? Unacceptable. There's only two things left that we loved about the 2000s. I right, got two left. I got two left. Okay, here we go. You know what I really love about the 2000s and the breakups of the celebrities was Britney and K-Fed. I don't know how those two crazy kids didn't make it. I mean, if they can't make their love work, what chance do the rest of us have? Aniston and, and Pitt, the shocking divorce between the two, just like just like Belichick and the Jets. I might decide to resign as the head coach of the New York Jets. So so sad. Broken hearts were scattered from Hollywood to the black hole. Just ask John Gruden. Yeah, I love it here. He started the decade as Oakland's happy head coach until an angry Al Davis dumped him in 2002. Unacceptable. Meanwhile, T.O. spent 10 seasons ticking off teammates from San Fran to Philly. I'm ready, I'm ready! Yes, busted relationships dotted the decade, but it was a different type of breaking that bought our affection in the 2000s. That's disrespectful! The number two thing we loved about the 2000s. Records were made to be broken. When a record lasts five years, and 10 years, and 15 years, and 20 years, you start to think, well, no one's ever going to break the record. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, hand it back to oh, Dylan. Oh, breaks it off, baby! <laughs> Dylan! Dylan's 278-yard day wiped out a rushing record over two decades old. Walter Payton had a great day with a whopping 275 yards on 40 carries. But supplanting sweetness in the record books, was just the beginning. There's no doubt that the 2000s were a record-setting decade. Throws and don't intercept it! He had Ed Reed's 107-yard interception return against the Eagles. Touchdown, Ed Reed! Randy Moss beating Jerry Rice's touchdown record that I never thought would fall. For Randy Moss, touchdown reception number 23, an NFL record. That Paul Horning's record broken by LaDainian Tomlinson for points in the season. LT. I want to thank you for allowing us to witness your greatness. Almost every week, a new record was being set. Move over NFL record books. Here comes Josh Gribbs. For some people, that's exciting. But for others, it's a problem. I wasn't that crazy about the, the, the touchdown record. Touchdown! Priest Holmes has set an all-time record for total touchdowns in a season. 
season. And like two years later, Sean, uh, you know, from the from the Seahawks, um, he breaks it. Sean Alexander with 28 touchdowns goes to the NFL record books. So now, okay, ta-da, he's a, and then Ladanian breaks it. The record doesn't mean anything when you're breaking it like every year. Special moment, never been done. Fact is, many of the decade's records were repeats. Remember Corey Dillon's big day? It is a great day for a miracle. Well, in the 2000s, miracles were run of the mill. Jamal Lewis has established a new single game record. The greatest rushing performance in National Football League history. Owens creating a new record every time he catches the ball now. Brandon Marshall breaks the NFL record with 21 receptions on that carry. Gary Anderson is the all-time NFL scorer. Martin Anderson has just become the NFL's all-time career scoring leader. I know I'm an old fuddy-duddy. But I'll tell you one thing, a lot of these records, you got to take them for the era that they were set. First thing we have to consider is the 16 game season. That will have a tendency to make the 12 and 14 game season records fall. And to think the record has stood for 46 years. Second thing is things are a lot more wide open offensively. Teams are passing about as much as they can possibly pass right now. Touchdown, Patriots, for Tom Brady. Touchdown pass number 50, an NFL record. The rules have changed to make this offense enhanced to make the scoring go high up in the air. So what are you going to get? You're going to get what the league wants, what the fans want, what TV wants, more points. The Patriots are now the NFL's all-time leading scoring team. Whether it was touchdowns or takedowns, the 2000s took the cake. Strahan's got the record, 22 and a half sacks. But among all the decade's record-breaking performances, two players stole our hearts. Emmett Smith uh, becoming the all-time leading rusher. Move over, sweetness! Make a place for Emmett! Oh, and you did it! You did it! And then just the succession of Brett Favre records. And the last of the significant In terms of records falling, this is the decade that more records have gone down than any other time that I can remember. Coming up. Let's go! Let's go! Coach, it's been a credible ride. Just what did we love the most about the 2000s? That's a great question. Well, apparently for some, affection knows no end. However, our list of the top 10 things we loved about the 2000s does have a finale. Following this recap, sheesh. Number 10, Favre can't figure it out. Yeah. Yes, no, maybe, maybe not. Mississippi, Minnesota. Number 9, 10 years of return royalty. It was the most exciting time for, for the kickoffs and the, and the punts. Number 8. The NFL does some renovating. We're now playing football in football stadiums. Number seven. Good night, Challenger! Challenges Challenges of the Red Flag Challenge. Boom! Number six. A heavyweight shootout. One guy wins all the time, another guy amasses great stats. Number five. Easy come, easy go. Teams and cities and organizations, they're not so patient anymore. Number four. For a decade, we were all Patriots. And the Patriots have done it again. Three out of four. Number three. They got these cameras on me again, mama. The 2000s trio of entertainers. Is there anything else I need to say? Number two. An historic run of records. Special moment. Never been done. And now, the number one thing we loved about the 2000s. Close Super Bowls. The thing I love most about the 2000s was close Super Bowls. Bienvenidos a the Super Bowl, the biggest football game in Western civilization. You had to love that the seven Super Bowls in the 2000s were decided by a touchdown or less. San Antonio with a touchdown! He's going to go all the way! Kids 
today grow up thinking the Super Bowl is going to be a good game. It's such a ridiculous concept to anybody who grew up in the 80s. The Bears, Patriots, what was that, 906 to 10 or something? And off the, the Bears. Bears. Super Bowl Sunday was kind of boring. Jerry Rice, another touchdown! For about 15 years, they were blowouts. <laughs> Holy cow! It was a terrible game. The Super Bowl's always let you down. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Well, not in this decade. We have just struck gold the last 10 years. Last I heard, you had to outscore somebody in four quarters. Game for game, the Super Bowls of the 2000s were as good as it gets. Game on the line here. Last play of the game. McNair drops, throws right side for Dyson. He dives for the end zone. No. The most famous tackle in the history of the Super Bowl. Yes, yes. I thought the Patriot-Ram game was very good. It was a team that really was fairly talentless. Tom Brady, overrated. Fantastic finish. One of the most thrilling finishes in the game's history. The Patriots appeared in four Super Bowls in the 2000s. All had great finishes. It's good! It's good! Patriots against the Panthers. It just exploded. And he's got it! A 41 yard field goal attempt. Snap. Ball down. Kick up. Kick is on the way. Kick is good. There weren't that many horrible Super Bowls. I mean, Bucks Raiders stunk. There it is. The Tigers in. Pats Eagles. That wasn't that bad because Donovan McNabb threw up all over the place. Oh boy. The Eagles Patriots Super Bowl. Donovan McNabb allegedly throwing up in the huddle. McNabb chucked up a late touchdown to make it close. But do those in the know think he upchucked? Most of them have been sworn to secrecy, except Freddie Mitchell, but nobody cares what he says anyway. I don't want to say it, but it's all clear, dog. We have the giant Patriots Super Bowl stopping the undefeated season of the Patriots. How did the Giants pull off one of the major upsets in Super Bowl history? The game comes down to one of the best catches of all time. Back to throw, under pressure, avoids the rush, and he's going to fight out of it. Still fights out of it. Now throws it deep downfield, wide open Tyree, who makes the catch. Everybody said, boy, that, that's the greatest game ever. We'll never have another Super Bowl that good. And the next year, you had one that may have even been better. Warner to pass with time. Fires over the middle of the fence. Caught at the 45 50. Goodbye. Cardinals lead. Absolutely the best game winning Super Bowl catch that I think we'll ever see. He scrambles around, throws it back corner of the end zone. Santonio with a touchdown. I don't know how he did it. There's just the great story of the New Orleans Saints. Colts driving. Manning in the shotgun puts Collie in motion. Looks in his direction. It picked up. Nowadays, every Super Bowl goes to the final two minutes. You've had really good football, and you've had really good seasons that have built to a game that sort of paid it all off. The Man, miracle Murphy. in Miami has happened. I don't know why it changed, but it is so blessed that it did. What a treat that the ultimate game finally started living up to its name. That's what I remember about the 2000s, and I can't wait till they're over. Aren't they over already? We're in the next decade, right? Yes, the 2000s are officially over. Next up, the 2010s. Or is it the 2010s? We didn't say 1,989. We said 1989. Why do we care about decades? You know, who was the team from 1996 to 2005? Who was the team of that decade? Maybe defining things by a decade is silly, but if we didn't, our list would have been endless. Well, it seemed like it took forever to get her. Well, 10 years left us with a lot to love. Here's hoping we'll heart the next decade as much as we did the last one.